No, I have done. Uh, hello, students. Oh, we've got a good crowd. We've got Ashley, Ben, Harris, Ben Seaman, Shane, and Braxton so far. Good deal. And uh, I'm kind of running late, but it's 930. It's time to start. Do any of you have any questions for me? Professor? Yes. I missed uh, Tuesday's class and I was wondering if you were going to be putting the uh, putting Tuesday's class on YouTube anytime soon. <laughs> I'll, uh, now, who am I talking to? This is Ben Harris. Hey, Ben. Thanks for asking. I will uh, I will tell my IT person that we've had a special request to get that uh, on there. Tuesday strength class and make sure it's on there. I and appreciate that. Thank you. She will. It might be tomorrow or the next day, but she will. She's pretty good about it. Anything else from anybody? Okay. Well, now I was looking at the schedule and it looks like you're supposed to do more circles. Homework. Uh, homework number 30. There's some more circles. There's number one and number two. And there's a ABC on one and an ABC on two. I gave you six of them to do. And I'll be glad to go through any one of those if you want me to. You just have to ask me. So go ahead and ask and I can do one if you like. And if you don't ask, we'll uh, we'll spend our time doing something else. If you if you feel confident about those more circles, great. Now your final will be available uh, Tuesday, the 8th of December. Now today's the third. And it's Thursday. So that final is available. Tuesday the 8th and it's due Friday the 11th. Make sure you get it in so I can get your grades all figured up. Now uh, Those more circles, I'm, I think, I forget when they're due. I think they're, uh, well, let me look and see. Let me see when they're due. And we can go over them if you want. They are due uh, the 6th. Looks like they're due the. Well, no, wait a minute. No, no, no. They're 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 due the fourth. Today's the third. Hey, hey, these these babies here are due tomorrow, but they don't take very long. Uh, to do. If you need help on them, just ask me, and I can do one. Now the the homework uh, for today though is. 
homework number 31. This is your last homework assignment. It's available this morning. It's due Sunday, the uh, 6th. Is Sunday the 6th? Get my calendar out here. Sunday is the 6th, yeah. Those, those have to do with buckling. We've been studying buckling. And <clears throat> that homework number 31 is problems uh, 13, 3, and 13, 7. They're available this morning and they're due this Sunday the 6th. So try to catch up on your homework. But right now we're going to talk about buckling. So uh, turn in your books to fundamental problem 13.5. And let's do that together. Unless you have another comment or question, we are going to look at 13.5. And it's on page six seventy eight. Okay, well, let's draw a uh, free body diagram and look at it, shall we? Okay, well, <clears throat> you know your final is going to be available the 8th. That's next Tuesday. Today is your, your last day of lectures. And we'll get, let's see who's calling me now. Somebody's calling me. Hello, David. Oh, I'm doing fine. David, I don't want to be rude, but I'm right in the middle of a uh, class. But, uh, oh, that's okay. Uh, David, say, here, I'll put you on speaker and say hello to my students. Go ahead, David, say hello to my students. Hello. <laughs> Guys, that is one of the best instructors you're ever going to get. Uh, David draw stuff. Uh, what what else did you what else did you have that you needed, David? Oh, okay. Call me later. Talk to you later. Uh, bye bye. All right. Now let's see. Where was I? Uh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> We're gonna do a problem. And I need some room to work that problem. I'm gonna have to erase all this stuff. Because we need the room. We're looking at F13.5. Fundamental problem 13.5, page 678. Okay, we've got, uh, you know what, it's a three, four, five triangle. We could even, uh, we could even measure that, couldn't we? Uh, I'll just draw it. We got that one there, that's the four feet. And we have kind of a guy wire there. And a uh, smooth pin there. Let's label all this stuff A, B, and C. Uh, 
and there's three feet between these two. So that makes this five feet because um, it's a three, four, five triangle. And we have this angle memorized. I told you guys to memorize it. It's 36, 87 degrees. Okay. And then they've got a force here. Now they're calling it P. And let me put it in red. There's a, there's a force right here. There we go. Determine the minimum, or no, the maximum force P that can be supported by the assembly without causing AC to buckle. See, this one here, AC is under compression. And if the compression is uh, big enough, it will buckle. And we can use Euler's equation. This member here is under tension. You don't buckle with tension. Okay, the member is made of A992 steel. Let's look, <clears throat> let's look up this stuff. Go to the back, look up A992 steel, and it says the modulus of elasticity is 29 times 10 to the third KSI. You'll see it there in the back. Okay, and then now what? Uh, it has a diameter of two inches. So we got a two inch diameter. All right, two inch diameter. Uh, so factor of safety of equal to two. Uh, do you guys remember a factor of safety? What that is, is your failure load over your allowable load. That's what factor of safety is. It's your failure load over divided by your uh, available load. Ta -da, there you go. Okay, do we have all the info? I think so. Looks like we've got all the info there. Okay, well, let's... Uh, <coughs> Let's look at this pin A for a minute. Now, pin A, I'll just draw it here. There's pin A. It's got, it's got this force P going down, and it has a tension force. Why don't we call that tension force F of AB? That sounds good to me. And it has a compressive force. We'll call that F of AC. Now we're gonna we're gonna write the sum of the forces <clears throat> in the y direction and in the x direction. See y is going up, and so you have FAB sine of thirty six eighty seven minus p equals zero. So we're going to solve that for, for uh, FAB. Get your calculators and solve for FAB. Go ahead. The trouble is we don't know what p is. We'll just have to write it in terms of p. We can do that, though. Do it. If you tuned in late, what we're doing is a buckling problem. We're worried about this member AC buckling because it's under compression. That's what the C stands for. 
and the force right now we're getting the force in a b and what i'm getting is one point a whole bunch of sixes times p i've got it in terms of p but i really want a c in terms of p so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write the sums the sum of the forces in the x direction now see the sum of the forces in the y direction is zero and the sum of the forces in the x direction will be zero in this class the sum of the forces in any direction is zero because nothing moves okay so what do i do now sum of the forces in the x well well i've got uh i've got this tension force fab which i know it's one point bunch of sixes times p but I need the cosine of 3687 degrees to get the component going to the right. And then I have minus FAC equals zero. Okay. Now we're going to solve for FAC. That's what we're really after. Because that's the force that's going to buckle this member. FAC is going to be, do a, little, do a little math with me now, go for it. Okay, I, I'm getting one point three three a whole bunch of threes times p. Now we're ready to use Euler's equation for the uh, critical load. Need a little room to write that. Uh, I think I could probably squeeze it in here someplace. Maybe in here. We'll, we'll, we'll write it in here. There's plenty of room right here. You know the equation, it goes like this. The, the critical load is equal to, this is Euler's equation. Now we, we've got pen, pen connections, so it's just the length squared. I believe that's it, isn't it? Did, did I get, we better double check on this. Look, look in your book and make sure that we have the, the Euler's equation for buckling. Make sure I wrote it down right. Yeah, that's right if you have pin connections, and we do. Okay, well, we got it right here. Let's, let's, let's write this out. Here we go. We know this is going to equal 1.333 times P. And that's going to equal pi squared E, which is we, we know E, need a little room right in here. We know E, it's 29 times 10 to the third KSI. Oh, we, we, need, the, we need the moment of inertia. Hmm. Well, we have an equation for that in the flap of your book. It goes like this. Look, look in the flap of your book. Do you see where my finger is wiggling a one-fourth pi r to the fourth? That's the moment of inertia of a round rod. Now we're going to need that. So uh, here, let, let me get that. 
See, that, that's going to go right here. And then we're going to divide by, you need inches. Four, four feet is 48 inches. You're going to have to go 48 inches squared. See this, see this lovely equation here? Here, I'll box it up for you. We're going to solve this lovely equation. There we go. But I need this moment of inertia. Whoops, what happened to the I? Forgot all about it. It goes right here. I think I erased it. All right, we're going to get it. Here we go. That's one fourth pi. Now they said it was a two inch diameter, right? So that means the radius is one inch. If it's a two inch diameter, so you go one inch to the fourth. Okay. What's that? Uh, pi divided by four. Well, that's it. Pi divided by four. That's it. So I'm getting a moment of inertia. It's 0.7854 inches to the fourth. 0.7854 inches to the fourth. There we go. There's our equation. And I want you to solve for this force P. And what we're going to get is we're going to get the failure. We're going to get the failure load that will cause this thing to buckle. Okay, plug all that in. I'll shut up for a minute and a half. You got time. I've circled the equation. You solve it, and we're going to get our maximum load for buckling, go for it. Well, I'll tell you what I got. Now, this is the failure load. In my writing, that's supposed to say failure. Kind of hard to read. But what I got was uh, 73, nah, you could round it off, I guess, 73.2, 73.2 kips. And if you got 73.2 kips, uh, say, say, uh-huh. I think I heard an uh-huh. I need another one though. That's what I got. Yay, good going. We got 70, if you have 73.2 kips for this P, this member AC will buckle. 
and you got yourself a problem. The whole structure comes crashing down. Now they wanted us to uh, have a factor of safety of two. So let, let me write that in here someplace. Now, now the way it works is the factor of safety is two. I'll tell you something interesting. Uh, aircraft, many components have a factor of safety that's just barely bigger than one. You think, well, gee, that's not very safe. But see, here's there's, there's something else going on with airplanes. You can make them really, really factor of safety of big numbers, but see that that makes them heavy. You don't want an aircraft to be too heavy because then then it has trouble getting off the ground. But in this case, we have a factor of safety of two and we have the failure load, which is 73.2 kips. And then this is going to be the allowable load. I don't know what to call it. How about P allowable? There we go. Now, when you solve that, what you'll get is an allowable load of, well, it'll be half of that. I'm getting 36.6 kips. If you don't exceed that, then you're safe. And the, uh, the piece isn't going to uh, buckle. Now let's look in the back and see how we did. They have answers on these fundamental problems. This was fundamental problem 13.5. And I'm going to go to the back and see what they said. They say... They say 13.5, they say 36.6 kips. Well, that's what we got. Yay, we got what the book got. Book's pretty, it's a pretty darn good book, really. I kind of like this book. They're right 99 point something percent of the time. Well, we got that under our belts, and we're going to move on. Do you have any questions? Okay, well, let's have some more fun. I'm going to erase all this, though, because I, I need the room. We're going to do another problem de dealing with buckling. And I was telling you before, you know, this is the last day of lectures. It's kind of sad. We've had fun time together since last August. Can you believe we started out? We started off August. 17th we went through september october november and now it's december and we've survived pretty much okay now this one <clears throat> this one is problem uh, 13 9. Okay, help me find it. 13.9. I'm going to shop around here. Oh, there's on the next page. It's on page uh, 680. Page 680. And they have a uh, steel column. It's nine meters long. It's fixed at both ends. Now, now in Euler's equation, let me write it for you again. This is this is Euler's equation.
for critical buckling, we did not derive this, but you could read the book. It wouldn't hurt you. You could read the book. The thing is, when you have a fixed ends like that, they have this factor there. It's called the uh, effective length factor. And if you have two fixed ends, the effective length factor is 0.5. You can, you can read that on page 675. See, it makes a difference how they're connected. Fixed connections like that, they don't pivot like a, a smooth pen. They can't just wiggle freely. It's, it's like welded in there at 90 degrees and it can't change where it's connected. But now the piece can still buckle. So uh, in this case here, <clears throat> we're doing problem 13.9. It's a steel column and they, and they give us, they give us this. It's equal to 200 gigapascal. They give us that. The K is given. It's 0.5 and the length is nine meters. So, so, so we know the length and we know K. The length is nine meters. So we know all of that. What we don't know is the I. We're going to have to figure out the moment of inertia. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me draw this thing. Uh, I wonder if I should try to draw it uh, to scale probably wouldn't hurt i'll just fake it i guess now this is 0.2 meters And, but this is a little shorter. It's, uh, it's only about like that. It's 0.15 meters. And this is 0.2 meters. Now these, these little end pieces are point. 0.01 meters, 0.01 meters, and the width of this <clears throat> is 0.01 meters. Okay, great. We want the moment of inertia. Now there's there's two ways to do this. Well, why, why don't we do it both ways? That'd be fun. Now, now the easy way, the easy way is you take this whole thing and you subtract these two empty spaces. So you go one twelfth <clears throat> point two times point one seven squared. So if if you take the 0.15 and add the 0.01 and the 0.01, that total distance from there, from there up to the top is 0.17. But see, you have to subtract the two areas that are not there. And that's going to be 1 12th times 0.19. It's not 0.2 anymore because you got a 0.01 there. To get to get that distance, 
times the 0.15. This is wrong. It's supposed to be Q. Uh, isn't it? Look in the flap of your book. Look in the flap of your book. Does it say 1 12th BH cubed? Yes, it does. I had the wrong number in there. And this is 1 12.1915 cubed. Now that's one way to do it. Go ahead and do that. And let's get our answer. Go ahead. I got an answer. If you got that answer, say, uh-huh. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, there's one. We got it. <clears throat> hey, I think we did it right. Now, now let's do it the hard way. And see, that was the easy way. Now we're going to do it the hard way. Now the hard way, we'll break it into these three pieces. And you'll go one twelfth. Well, now really, before you ever get started, Get your red pencil and put a red dot right there, right there, and right there. <clears throat> and so what you do is you go one twelfth point two times point oh one cubed. <clears throat> And then you have another one up here. It's the same. It's 1 12th times point. Now, wait a minute. Auga. We got to use a parallel axis theorem now. And this is a second now. I need this distance from here to there. Now, let me think about it. Hmm. Uh, let's see. That distance is. I think it's 0.08. I think it's 0.08. And so, so what you have to do is you have to go plus this area, which is 0 0.2, 0 0.01 times 0 0.08 squared. This is called the parallel axis theorem. Now there's two of those. There's a the bottom flange and the top flange. So I'm just going to multiply. Instead of writing all that out again, I'm too lazy. I'm just going to multiply it all by two. Now I'm going to add the web. Now the web's easy. You just go 1 12th, 0 0.01, 0 0.15 cubed. That's it. All right. Now I'm going to shut up. I'll give you two minutes. I want you to plug all this stuff in. Now, if we're very, very lucky, it'll come out the same as what we got before. We're just really just checking our work. Okay, go for it. Do it.
0.2, I'm getting the same number again. I get the feeling maybe we did it right. But I want to wait till I hear several uh-huhs so that I can feel good about this. That's what I got. Yay, there's two of us. Need a couple of more uh-huh's. Uh -huh. Hey, there's another one. See, that's good practice for us. We needed that practice in doing the parallel axis theorem, didn't we? Uh, yes, we did. Didn't hurt us a bit to do that. I need one more uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yay, there's one. Now, here, here's where I need to warn you about something. I told you about this last time. But sometimes my students don't listen to me. Let's see if I let me see if I can demonstrate this. I've got a meter stick here. I've got a meter stick. And the meter stick, you can bend it pretty good this way. See, I'm bending it. Look at that. It's bending. Yeah. It's bending really nice. You can see the curve, can't you? But now if I turn the meter stick this way and I try to bend it, I'm, I'm gonna try, here goes. I'm trying to bend it, but it just doesn't bend very good. You understand? Because the moment of inertia is much bigger this way, it doesn't bend with the door. It's a lot smaller. The moment of inertia is a lot smaller this way. You got to figure it both ways. Okay, let's do that. We're going to figure it both ways. And what you want is the smallest moment of inertia because that's the way it's going to bend. Now, now to do this the other way, really, we probably should draw this. We probably should draw it like this. All I've done is taken the same wide flange beam and I've just turned it 90 degrees. Okay, I've turned it 90 degrees. And we're going to find the moment of inertia when it's oriented like that. See, see what we did here. This, this would be trying to bend it about this axis. This one here, we're trying to bend it about that axis. It's going to bend about the axis that has the smallest moment of inertia. Now, the advantage of doing it this way is when you put your red dots on there, you don't need to do your parallel axis theorem at all because there's no, there's no distance in the y up and down direction between the, any of those red dots. I hope that makes some sense. Okay, we're gonna find the moment of inertia this way. Here we go, I need a little room here. And uh, well, I'll just write it right here, I guess. Moment of inertia doing it this way is 1 12th, 0.01, Point 0.2 cubed 
But see, there's two of these flanges. So what we'll do is we'll multiply that times two plus the moment of inertia of this web, which is 112.15.01 cubed. That should be it. Okay. Plug, plug that in. See what you get. Go ahead. Well, I got an answer. <clears throat> I'll tell you what I got doing it this way. I got a moment of inertia doing it this way of 1.33, maybe rounded off, times 10 to the minus 5. Now, if you got that, say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. There's two of us. Yep. Yep, there's another one. Now, let's compare this one with this one. Hey, you know what? This one's smaller. 1.3 is smaller than 2.8, isn't it? I can tell you which way this thing is going to bend. It's going to bend about it's going to bend about this axis, not this axis. It's going to bend about this axis. So we you have to do it both ways to figure out which which moment of inertia is the smallest, because that's the way it's going to bend. All right. Well, we did that. I think we know everything now, and now we're going to put in put in all our numbers, and we're going to solve for the critical load. I just need some room here. Any any questions before we solve for the critical load? That's what they wanted, isn't it? Let me read it. Uh, let's see. We're doing problem 13.9. Yeah, we're finding the critical load. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Well, here goes. I need the room. Yeah, here we go. Okay, we got pi squared, 200 giga Pascal times the 1.335 times 10 to the minus fourth meters to the fourth divided by, in this case, if you read it, it says they're fixed. It's got fixed at both ends. So you have to go 0.5 times the nine meters squared. Okay, well, there, there's our equation. Plug it all in and let's see what we get.
Well, I got an answer. Make a little room here. Let me call on some of my students and see. See if you guys got what I got. All right, let me call on my friend. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to find. Shane, unmute and say hello, please, Shane. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Shane, have, have you plugged all this stuff in and gotten a critical load yet? Yeah, I got 6.5 times 10 to the 7. That's not what I got. I got twice that. I may type it in wrong. Yeah, you do it again. I got twice that. I wonder how that happened. Now you have to multiply this. You have to go at one half times nine, and then you have to square that. Yeah, you need to figure out what you're doing there, Shane, because we Samuel, unmute and say say hi for me, Samuel, please. Good morning. Samuel, did you plug that in? What'd you get? Um, I got 13.01 mega newtons. You know what? That's what I got. I got 13. Point oh one mega newtons. Now, I'm curious to see if that's the right answer. Go to the back, look up thirteen nine, and let's see what it says here. I'm professor. Yes. On your one point three three five, isn't it times ten to negative five, not negative four? Uh, well, I got ten to the negative five. But in your equation, you have negative to the negative four. Oh, oh, you're absolutely right. Is that Ashley? Yes. Uh oh, guys. I don't know how I did that. Put a negative five. So I think that makes it 1.3. Oh, one mega newtons. We'll give Ashley a nice thank you point there. Now go to the back and look it up, 13.9. It says here, 1.30 mega newtons. Yay! We, this is what the book got. How about that? We did good. Now let me show you what that means. And then we'll move on and have more fun. Let me make uh, make some room here. What we have is this uh, artist rendition here. Oh man, I don't know if I can draw this or not. Uh, we'll, we'll try. It kind of looks like that, doesn't it? And I think it's going to bend <clears throat> about this axis. If if you put enough force on it. So you take, 
take and put compression forces on it like that of 1.3 mega newtons and this thing will uh now wait a minute i think I, I think i'm doing this wrong guys i don't think it bends about this axis I'm getting mixed up here i think it bends about this axis going through uh like that no no i had it right in the first place i think it bends i think it bends about this axis like that yeah if it, so see what's going to happen is if if you put that much that much force on it and try to compress it this thing buckles and instead of being straight anymore, it's going to be curved here. I'll kind of fake it here. It's going to, it's going to curve there. See, see how it's, it's curving there. And here, it's curving there. Can, can you see? Just like I did with my meter stick a while ago. Right? I'm not very good with three dimensional stuff. Uh, no. No, it's this, it's this axis going this way. It's this axis going this way. It, it bends about that axis. It bends about that axis, doesn't it? If you bend about that axis, honestly, when it comes to 3D stuff, I, I'm just not very good at all. I think we did everything correct. I just can't, I just can't feature the way that thing is going to bend. I know how my meter stick is going to bend. <clears throat> Let me get my meter stick again. Uh, here's my meter stick. Only we're not we're not bending it like this. We're bending it like this. See, it bends like you can't see it very good, but see, see, it bends like that. And uh, this uh, this meter stick. Has a cross section like this. It does not bend about this axis. It bends about this axis. Because the, the, going about this axis here, call it the x axis. <clears throat> The moment of inertia about that x-axis is bigger. Call this the moment of inertia about the y-axis. It's smaller. And it bends about that axis. Now, what is the case on our thing here? Well, uh, <clears throat> Instead of the meter stick like this, I think it's like this. And it doesn't bend about that axis. It bends about the other axis. It bends about this axis. There's your I Y. That's the 1.335 times 10 to the minus fifth. 
and here's your ix and i think we erased it but it was 2.3 or something like that okay well that was kind of fun let's do another one any comments or questions all right well we'll, we'll do another one here we go now this one is uh i need the room to to erase all that stuff Uh, let's say goodbye to all that. And this one is uh, thir 13 and uh, uh, 1321. Let's see what that is. Help me find it. 1321. I'm shopping around trying to find 1321 now. Yeah, there we go. I see it. Okay. Gosh, that looks sort of like the one we did earlier. We, we did one similar to that uh, earlier, didn't we? No, 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 no. I'm getting mixed up here. We, we already did that 1321, didn't we? No, it was a 345. This is different. Yeah, this is different. It's a piece of pipe, for one thing. It's got an outer diameter of two inches. It's A36. Pipe with an outer diameter of two inches. Outer diameter of two inches. Okay. Uh, but we uh, we don't know what the inner diameter is. But it's a piece of pipe. So it's going to have an inner diameter. I guess we're going to find out what it is. The outside diameter is two inches. The inside diameter uh question mark we don't know what it is okay keep reading uh we're looking at problem 1321 <clears throat> uh, let's draw it it's 14 feet gee that's pretty pretty long piece of pipe there it is there's a long piece of pipe 14 feet 30 degrees okay that puts you right about here yeah, let me measure that. Let's see. 30 degrees. Ah, that's more than 30 degrees. Let's make it better. That's much better. 30 degrees. Smooth pen, right? Read it. Smooth. Somehow they arranged a smooth pen on this thing. And you've got some kind of guy wire here at C. This is A. This is B. Kind of similar to that other problem. You got the you got a force P going down here. What do, what do they want to know? This is 14 feet. What do they want to know? They need the inner diameter to the nearest eighth of an inch so it can support a... They're going to give us this. This is four kips. We don't want... See, this is under compression. We don't want it to buckle. 
All right. I think we got all the info. We're going to do the same sort of trick we did before. We're going to look at this pin B here. See, here's pin B. And you have a, a tension in this cable. Well, why don't we call it F of B, C? That'd be a nice name for it. And you've got four kips this way. So we can find F of B, C, and we can also find the compressive force F of A, B. Now we did this before a little, a little earlier today. So I, I don't need to do that for you. You can do it. Find, I'll shut up. I want you to find F, B, C and F of A, B. You got two minutes. I bet you can do it. F find those forces. I'll be right back. Well, let's find out what the, uh, <clears throat> what are we trying to find out now? Oh yeah, we're going to find the forces here in that guy wire. Uh, 
did you get did you get eight caps in the BC and six point nine two eight kips in a b if you did say uh -huh. uh huh there's one uh-huh ah there's two give me another one yeah i got that yeah good okay well i think we're ready to do our uh euler equation you know how to do that this one's under compression, you understand. So you go 6.928 kips is equal to pi squared, uh oh, A36. We're going to have to look that up. Go to the back. Go to the back of your book and look up A36 in Inglés, senor. It's uh, 29, it's 29 times 10 to the third KSI. Uh-oh, we, we're going to have to figure out this moment of inertia. And then you divide by, you need inches, 14 times 12. What? I can't do that in my head. 14 times 12. I'm getting 168 inches. But you have to square that, remember. You know what, if we could only uh, write this I, we could solve this problem. Now the thing is, it's a it's a pipe. And it's got a uh, outside radius of one inch and an inside radius of uh well we don't know why don't we just call it r little i that that'll do it and here's here's your equation if you look in the flap of your book it's one fourth pi outside radius one inch to the fourth no yeah to the fourth minus your inside radius to the fourth isn't that right look look in the flap of your book yep that's it one fourth pi r to the fourth well i tell you what let's do let's solve this for i solve this for i and we'll put it right here. Here we go. So I'm going to do that now. We're doing some math. Let's see. 4 times 6.928 6 yeah. uh, times 168 squared divided by pi squared divided by 29e e to the third. I might have done that right. I'm getting 0. 0.27326, blah, 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 blah. What, what I did was I solved this. Let me circle it for you. I solved that for i. I is equal to this. I solved this for I, put it in here, and now I have to solve this for the inside radius. Okay. We have three minutes left. We don't have much time. I'll give you a minute. See, see if you can get this inside radius. You got a nice equation, only one unknown. I know you can do this. Go for it. See if you can.
for, if you just woke up from a daydream and wondering, well, what is he doing now? We're doing problem 1321. We're finding the inside radius of this pipe so that it won't buckle. And I'm getting 0.8986 something inches. If you got that, say, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, well, look, there's two of us. But that's not what they wanted. They wanted the inside diameter. Well, that's not a problem. To get the diameter, you just multiply by two. And here's what I'll get for the inside diameter. 1.79 something inches inside diameter. But if you read the problem, they want it to the nearest eighth of an inch. Uh, well, let's see, that's bigger than one inch. If you had one and uh, six eighths inches, that would be 1.75. See, you want it, you want it the smallest. But what, what if you had one and seven eighths? Let me see what that would be. What's one plus seven eighths? That's 1.875. No, that, that's going to make it too thin. Do you understand? I wonder if this is the right answer. Uh, we're running out of time. Oh, it's so sad. Go to the back and let's see what 1321 says for the right answer. They said, uh, they said one and the diameter is one and one eighth. I did something wrong. They said the in, inside diameter is one and one eighth. Uh, I went astray and we're running out of time. It's so sad. Is 14 times 12 uh, really 168? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, let me do this one more time here, just a second. I think I made a mistake here. No, I'm getting uh wait a minute, I got a different answer this time. This time I got point six eight something. Let me do it again. Oh gee, we're guys, it's sad. Uh, I'm gonna steal a minute from you. So solve that for I again. I think that might be where I made my mistake. I'm getting 0.683 something or other when I do this this time. I'm not getting this. And so when you do that, 68317 or something like that, now let me solve that for R and let's see, that answer could be wrong. <clears throat> yeah, let me see what I get, hang on. Gee, I'm getting a different answer. I'm getting 0.6 inches. So that would give a diameter of uh, 1.2 
inches and uh, see if you want it to the nearest eighth what they say the answer was one and one eighth what's one and one eighth that's 1.125 isn't it yeah that would work what's one and two eighths that's 1.25 well, see, that's that's too big. You know what? I think that's it, guys. I think I found my answer. I think they're right. The inside diameter is one and one eighth. It's sad, but our semester is over. There's no more le uh, lectures. There's your final. Turn in your homework best you can on Blackboard. Do your final. Turn it in on time, and I will see you around. Bye, bye, students. Hi, Mr. Griffin. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you.